I want to quickly talk to you about how to start a furniture business this year, okay? And so here are the general information I want you to think about. First of all, when you think about a furniture business, think about a business that's highly cyclical, a business that's that's highly local, okay? So you have this uh, duality of cyclicality and locality, geography, it's a, it plays an important role. And it's one of those things where you have to really understand that scalability also plays an important role when it comes to uh, the furniture business, okay? One thing for sure, there is plenty of competition in the furniture market, especially if you factor in the giant share of affordable global chains like uh, IKEA and what have you, okay? That's why it's important to differentiate your products, find your unique selling proposition, your, your uh, USP, and also you have to build a memorable brand. It's all about making sure that you are actually spending money in building a memorable, memorable brand. So here are the methods I want you to think about. The first thing you want to do is to choose your business model. Business model is very important. Now, there are multiple ways to launch a furniture business and sell home goods online and in person. The avenue you choose will depend on a number of factors, such as, let's say, your skill level, your startup budget, what kind of cash inflows and cash outflows you have, and also storage availability. And so before you develop your business plan, you want to really uh, be, you want to familiarize yourself with the different business models. So you can be a furniture maker, you can be a furniture designer, so working with a with a manufacturer. You can be a curator and reseller. So in other words, you're not doing the, the primary work, but you are curating the work. So in this model, you would sell a number of items from uh, different brands or makers, curating collections that are unique to your brand, okay? That's kind of important to think about stuff that way. You can be a dropshipper. So a dropshipper is, is an important sort of role also. So. Uh, the, this method, dropshipping method, is the same as uh, the one that I told you a little earlier, but it is a hands-off option if you're not able to store or ship the items yourself, okay? And this is, so look to work with makers and brands that are willing to uh, ship directly to your customers on a dropshipping model, cutting yourself out of the uh, supply chain. And you can be another business model is to be a vintage reseller. So this is actually another curated reseller model that focuses on one of, one of a kind vintage or antique pieces. So this is kind of cool and uh, you are able to uh, get things done a lot faster. So after choosing your business model, you need to finance your furniture business. So ka-ching, 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 really important. Before you before you make money as a furniture business owner, you have to really invest some, some money, okay? Now, how, how much does it cost to start a business selling furniture online? Well. The answer depends on what kind of business structure you choose in the first place. So on the low end, I'm gonna first explain to you what happens on the low end, and then I'll speak about what happened on the high on the higher end, especially if you have a, a larger budget, okay? Now on the lower end, it's possible to get started with a few hundred dollars if you plan to drop ship. That's what I said to you a little, a little earlier. Because in drop shipping, there is no need to hold inventory. You actually are you are outsourcing the 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 host the the storage the production, the shipping to a third party, to the drop shipper, okay, to the drop shipping supplier. So a custom or a made to order furniture business can also have a low startup cost. That's it. That's if you already have a hobby workshop. This model will allow you to buy, let's say, materials as you go. So there is no need to invest much upfront, right? The whole thing is you want to really cut cost upfront so you can focus on developing and um, scaling your business. So that's that's for the lower end. You have drop shipping, but you also have custom or made to order furniture business. On the higher end, if you don't already own the necessary tools and equipment to start a, a maker business, expect to spend a thousands of dollars, thousands of dollars, or even th tens of thousands of dollars to set up a workshop. Also consider the cost of space rental if applicable. You gotta also think about your utilities, for instance, okay, and safety equipment like proper ventilation. Resale businesses can also be costly to start as you'll be required to uh, buy and hold inventory. Now, one thing for sure, it is possible to actually uh, start a furniture a business uh, from home if you have a suitable space like your basement or a climate controlled garage for storage. But you wanna forecast out what the cost might be uh, to scale to a dedicated space or work with a warehouse partner. Now, you also have a financing options for uh, furniture sellers, okay? And as with uh, any other small business, there are several funding options. If you don't plan to bootstrap, that is, 
reinvest profits into the business. You may need to find outside funding, so crowdfunding is a popular option that allows you to uh, pre-launch your furniture business and seek uh, funding from potential customers. Bank loans, small business grants, and venture capital firms may also be sources of funding for your business, so a solid business plan will help you secure funding from investors. If you are trying to start a furniture business this year, you got to really think about making your business legal, right? It's all about legitimacy. It's all about making sure things are done in a legit way. So you have to cover all your legal requirements so that you can avoid potential fines and issues down the road. You don't, you don't, you, you have no idea. You do not want to have your ass sued. Okay. And so what you want to do is you want to choose a corporate structure. You want to get your EIN. And you want to obtain the necessary permits and licenses. So necessary permits and licenses, those will depend on the the specific geography or where you are at, the city and state where you are at. Okay. So when I speak about choosing a corporate structure, depending on the type of entity you will create on your own, you might want to have a, like an LLC for your own furniture store. Corporations, LLCs, and sole proprietorships are the most uh, common business type. Okay, an LLC will, will actually protect you from personal liability, but the cost to form one vary depending on your state. And when I speak about uh, getting your EIN, the, an EIN, an employer identification number, is issued by the IRS. So this is a number that's used to verify your business for tax purposes. It's kind of similar to your social security number, but for your business. And, you, and when I speak about obtaining uh, the necessary permits and licenses, well, get a business license from your city or county. Also inquire about getting other required documents like a seller's permit, zoning permits, and environmental permits. Navigating the legal landscape can be complex, so you might want to consult with a business, with a business attorney to ensure all legal aspects are properly addressed. Next, you want to open a business bank account. So once you have established your business structure, you want to open a business bank account. So having a business bank account helps establish credit for your business and shows professionalism okay to your clients and suppliers and you got to show that so manage your money where you make it okay that's uh in other words you you can make it uh for, like you manage your money from a bank account so you can separate actually uh you can separate your financial affairs personally and business related business wise so that's really good Next, I want you to think a little bit about marketing. So you want to build your furniture brain. So when you want to start a furniture business, you want to build your furniture furniture brain and you have to define your brain at this early stage because you want to differentiate yourself in a very credit marketplace. Okay. Answering a few questions will help you tell your brain story, carve out your visual aesthetic, capture your mission statement and more clearly envision your ideal customer. So your ideal customer is basically the ideal persona, somebody who is going to uh, actually buy from you. Okay, it's all about in increasing uh, your uh, the, the the time it takes for you to qualify leads, for you to push uh, leads down your sales funnel. Okay, now consider uh, the following when, when picking a business model or angle, category use. So office furniture, outdoor living, home accents, product it can be sofa bed, dining tables, nursery items, style, mid century modern, minimal, rustic. Customer, students, apartment dwellers, cottage owners, niche, smart furniture, modular pieces, furniture made from recycled materials, cause it can be fair trade, handmade locally, sustainable, price it can be a low, retail, high volume, high end, bespoke. So it really depends on what you what what you really uh, setting yourself up to. Okay, your branding exercise would start with market research that examines the following: your target customer profile. The local market, right? It's all about geography, competitors, and also trains. When I speak about trains, you want to examine furniture train, uh, furniture design trains, home trains, e-commerce design, and any other trains that may impact brand design decisions. And uh, so also uh, one thing for sure, when I speak about the, the local market, if you plan to sell locally or open a brick and mortar store, understand the furniture landscape in your area. If you remember, I was telling you that it's all geography based. Next, you want to source furniture for designers and resellers. That's really important. So 
one, how do you source suppliers or manufacturers depends on the type of furniture business you plan to start. So designer for furniture designers who do not plan to make the furniture themselves, look for a trusted manufacturer. It's pretty, it's pretty straightforward. And uh, resellers, if you are looking to resell products by others, you can hit the pavement and approach makers and brands to ask about wholesale uh, pricing and terms. And there are also a wholesale marketplaces that allow resellers to browse vendors who are actively looking for retail partners. And you also have a uh, vintage sellers. So you have got to go at places such as auction, estate sales, online marketplaces and classified, uh, classified sites. You can have flea or outdoor markets and collectors. So you can have a, you can actually uh, cast a water net. You can also be a dropshipper. So future, like uh, if you are a furniture dropshipper, you can browse a number of dropshipping suppliers and directories like AliExpress. So that's kind of cool. Next, if you are thinking about starting a furniture business this year, you want to set up shop for furniture makers. If you want to go the furniture maker or the business model set up shop so for furniture makers starting a furniture business can be costly if you don't already know if you or don't already own tools or have a dedicated workshop okay and uh so uh, one thing for sure if you want to go with the, the shop method you want to keep your workshop tidy so a clean and organized shop is a safe and productive shop consider workflow what tools do you need to have in order to accomplish what you want to do what order would, would they be used in? This will help you figure out the layout for each main piece of machinery. From there, you, you just find the best place for the smaller stuff. The table saw is the heart of your, of your workshop. Make sure you have enough space around it to make the cuts you need. Manage dust. Where should your ducts be uh, run for maximum efficiency? And you want to light things up, okay? So for lighting, go bigger than you think you need. You can never have too much light in the shop, okay? You can really go for, you can go with the LEDs anywhere, LEDs, okay? You also want to manage furniture inventory and storage. That's going to help you a lot. So if you have decided to make a resale furniture and are not dropshipping or making to order, be sure to consider your space needs. This will be very helpful, especially in the long run. So uh, as I mentioned a little earlier in the financing section, this could account for a considerable uh, chunk of your startup cost. So this is kind of important. So. One thing for sure, when you think about managing uh, storage and inventory, you got to really ask yourself what kind of space you have, okay? Warehousing and storage solutions for furniture, you have uh, dedicating a room inside your home for this purpose. Renting, or you can rent a climate-controlled storage space, best for overflow inventory that you don't need to access regularly. You can work with a warehouse partner who also handles uh, shipping and order fulfillment. And uh, you can also try renting buying your own dedicated office and warehouse space. One thing for sure, when deciding how and where to warehouse or store your products, consider the condition of the space. Many materials like wood and natural fabrics are susceptible to extreme temperatures, pests and fluctuations and in humidity. So that's important to think about stuff that way. Next, you want to learn to uh, photograph furniture and home decor products, okay? As with clothing, furniture is very personal. So without a fitting room or showroom, it's up to uh, online businesses to actually replicate as much of the in-person buying process as possible. So scale and size, texture and detail are really all important aspects to capture when photographing the furniture and home accents, okay? And so uh, one thing for sure, you have to really understand that when it comes to uh, photography, there are a few tips that you need to really focus on. Scale is important. You want to zoom in, you want to light it up, and you want to tell a story. So scale is important in the sense that aside from providing detailed measurements in the description, be sure to capture the piece within a space next to other familiar and commonly uh, sized uh, the core items. Zoom in, detailed close-ups will help your customers feel the product without touching it. Try to capture texture in, in fabric and the detail of wood grain. Light it up, so lighting is a critical uh, to capture in detail and color accurately. So a simple lighting uh, setup can be achieved with diffused natural lights or a lighting kit. And tell a story, so beyond the product description, your visuals should also tell a story. Who is this for? How should, they be st how should the whole thing be styled? What are some other products that uh, 
complement it? Do you do this by, inc by including lifestyle photos along with those against the plain background and staging in a room and provide style ideas that inspire our customers to envision it in their own space? They have to really visualize in their own space. That's very important. Next thing you want to do is you want to set up your online furniture store, okay? Before you actually launch your furniture or business to the world, take time to play around with your online store builder. Launching a simple landing page at the, this stage, along with your social accounts, can help you build an email list so you can make a big splash at your official uh, grand opening. And that will be really helpful, especially in the long run. So you have uh, a lot of uh, design and themes for online furniture stores. You also have, you can think about product pages for uh, furniture stores. You can also think about uh, the about, contact and FAQ pages for uh, furniture brands, okay? So you have a lot of possibilities there. And you also have a uh, e-commerce apps for your furniture store in terms of delivery date, honeycomb, upsell and cross sell. You have wishlist plus and you have bold product options. So that's really good. Next thing you want to do is you want to expand your selling channels, okay? Other than your online furniture store, consider additional sales channels to get your products in front of uh, customers in a crowded market. If you are a maker or designer, can you reach other geographies by wholesaling your products? If you are an online-only furniture brand, this may be an easy way to dabble in retail. So pop-up retail is a great option for vintage furniture resellers, for instance, designers or makers. Think local outdoor markets or trade shows, for instance. And often, larger retailers will often uh, open uh, in-store pop-up spaces for, emer for emerging brands that complement their offerings. It's all about really exploring that sort of a uh, partnership. Also consider if uh, any social sales channels or online marketplaces are right for your audience. As a furniture maker or a vintage reseller, you can integrate your Etsy sales with Shopify to get the best of both worlds. For instance, your own dedicated site and access to potential buyers on marketplaces such as uh, eBay, Amazon, and uh, Etsy. What other sites think uh, home goods resellers can you explore? The same thing can be said of uh, WooCommerce and BigCommerce. Next thing you want to do is you want to market your furniture business, okay? So as part of your business plan, a marketing plan lays out your marketing approach and core channels. There is actually, when you think about marketing uh, your furniture business, there is actually no uh, one-size-fits-all solution to marketing uh, for furniture businesses. A good, a good rule of thumb is having the right message in the right place at the right time. Those factors will depend on who your customer is, who your customer is, and where they hang out is it more worth your time and money to invest in email marketing or in facebook ads should you try content marketing or google ads testing is your friend at this stage it's all about the uh, multivariate testing it's all about alterations when you launch your uh, your furniture business consider that your product will be subject to taste and may require guidance for those less design savvy and so content can be very powerful for this reason. So build an audience on Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok by offering home design advice and tips. And this can be tools to drive traffic to your store and establish yourself and your brand as a credible expert in this space. Next thing you want to do here is to set up shipping returns and customer service. Okay, shipping is a massive challenge especially if you are going to think about very large furniture, okay? And uh, so uh, you, when you are just starting up, you may be managing order fulfillment and shipping yourself. But one thing for sure, once you grow, you want to start working with the right partners, find a shipping company that has good reviews and build a relationship with them. Make sure you can get uh, quick quotes based on weight and, and dimensions ahead of time so you can factor that into your price. You also want to invest in packaging. So package or create your product really well. This way you have the peace of mind that your beautiful dining page, uh, dining table, dining, not dining page, dining table looks as if uh, it should when it reaches your customer. So this is kind of cool. Now we also have to think about uh, returns. Returns can be very tricky when you are dealing with oversized items. Be sure that your return policy is very clear. If you do not accept the returns, this information should be clearly presented to the customer at the checkout stage and even on the product page. If you are willing to accept the returns, establish the terms with uh, your shipping partner. 
upfront and let the customer know who will be responsible for the return shipping charges, which may be substantial, really. You also have to determine your shipping strategy as early as the business plan stage because this may impact your cost and financial planning. And one thing I also want to say is that finally here, when it comes to actually starting your furniture business, try to get the business insurance. You just never know. Before you start selling furniture online, check in with the legal and insurance professionals to see if your business requires any additional protection due to the size and price of the items you are delivering. I mean, you are delivering, uh, you know, gigantic items, quote unquote, gigantic items. So you want to protect yourself from loss, such as items damaged in transit. But you should also consider protecting your customers. Will you extend, uh, will you sell extended warranties? Do you need commercial insurance? There are several types of business insurance, so it's important to do your homework to ensure that you have put the right protections in place before you start selling, okay? That's really the, 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 the whole thing here. Now, one thing I want to say is that you have to really understand that you are able to get things done a lot faster, okay? When you are, you have also the ability to have, uh, when you think about successful furniture business examples, you have Goody, for instance, you have uh, Timberware, okay? You can see this on the screen here. This is Timberware on the screen. Chris, uh, Chris Hughes, the founder. You have, uh, so you have a lot, of, a, lot, a lot of possibilities, especially when it comes to uh, scaling things the right way. In closing today's conversation, I spoke to you about how to start a furniture business. I give the general information, the, the, myth, the methods, and now the closing. Thank you so much. God bless you. I'll see you next time.